I'm impressed with the turnover, turnout for a uh, graveyard shift, so um, I'll keep it swift uh, because I'm sure everybody wants to get to the racing. Um, I've got two things I want to talk about, really. Um, I don't have the sustainable model. Okay? We, as full tech, are looking like everybody else to try and make our business more sustainable and actually to try and get some growth. So I want to talk at the first bit of the presentation about um, what we think you know, would make a market sustainable and what sort of uh, principles that we would have to follow and what we believe in at Spool Tech. And then secondly, I just want to talk about some of the areas where we're trying to come up with new innovation to make ourselves more sustainable. And actually, a message for this audience in particular, um, why we struggle to do, to implement that innovation in racing and why a lot of that implementation is, that innovation is implemented in football in particular. Um, and they're the two messages I want to put across. Uh, is the presentation coming up? No presentation. Oh, it's button. Ah. <laughs> Innovation, look at that. Um, I'll, when I finish blushing, I'll uh, carry on. I'm the same, same colour as this slide now. Um, if you look at a sustainable model, I thought it was worth looking at some, um, you know, some numbers. And if you compare the UK uh, sports betting market with two other, you know, similar sizes. I mean, Germany is obviously a huge economy, but the UK is definitely the largest sports betting market in Europe. Okay, and our view is that that's down to competition, um, and we, you know, we believe that sustainability. You know, comes with innovation and competition. Um, now, we can all look at the UK market and look at how uh, Paul Bitter earlier was talking about how you know, innovation has come through lack of funding going into the industry um, and decide whether we think it's a good model or a bad model. My point isn't which model's correct, it's that innovation and competition is what's going to drive a more sustainable model. Um, and in order to get that model so that it is sustainable, we just need the right balance. Uh, and I know this is one bit of apple pie and motherhood, but very difficult to achieve. We just need the right mix between you know, tax, return to racing, and return to, um, return to the operators to allow competition, and actually to allow us to compete with offshore operators. And has been made very clear today to compete with other industries such as you know, cinema, um, video games, and, and everything else that people want to um, you know, that the youth of today want to play. Um, regulators, again, that's come up regularly this afternoon, have a big part to play in this. We're looking in some markets in Europe where, um, you know, where the regulations that are coming out are making it very difficult for people to go and operate in those markets. And I don't believe much innovation uh, will come out of those markets, and I don't think that those markets, as they're currently projecting their, their regulations, will be sustainable. Um, you know, operators will lose money in those markets. Um, and, you know, this point's come out throughout the afternoon. We, we, have, to, we have to innovate as well as, as suppliers in the industry and come back to operators as well and, and offer them new products. And I think the key point about sustainability is if we don't supply customers what they want, someone else will, whether that's an offshore bookmaker, uh, whether that's a, one of our direct competitors, or whether that's a different industry. Um, so our approach, um, you know, it comes to, you know, no surprises. It's compete with the licensed operators uh, in regulated markets. But actually what we're trying to do is develop, um, develop models that allow us to compete with illegal operators. So if you look at our Dutch market, you know, we, we're, th we're there, we're regulated, um, we, uh, we have a monopoly, but we're actually absolutely open to deregulation and competition. Um, but we, you know, we compete with offshore operators who don't have to follow the same regulations. So you know, we have to look at improving our offering to try and compete with our offshore offering. Um, we believe in developing products on a, a number of fronts. We don't develop everything in-house. Uh, we're looking for a lot of our innovations from smaller companies um, that, and, and then we invest in them or buy into them um, or form strategic partnerships with them and then try and bring that product in-house. Uh, we're, we're quite keen followers of a, of a discipline called the Lean Startup Movement, 
which is all about trying to try lots of things, fail fast, um, you know, and if, you, if a product that you try is no good, fine, don't spend too much money on it, get it out there. If it doesn't work, move on to the next one. And that's a portfolio theory. You need to be, you need to be developing on a number of fronts. Um, we, we believe in investing in the core technology, as we'll come on to in the second half of my presentation. That's easier said than done. You know, we just talked about um, ITSP protocols. Um, actually, you know, some of those restraints hold us back from investment in our, in our core product, but we are investing. Um, and we believe in investing in the customer experience both on and offline. Quite often in the racing industry, the, um, as somebody term, coined the phrase earlier, we're producer-led. Okay, so as an industry, um, I, I believe that too often we as producers do what is right for us as an industry, or what we feel is right, without actually looking at what's right for the customer. And it's the theme of the day, we need to innovate. Um, so the second part of my presentation, on the basis that sustainability is about innovation, um, we, uh, I can announce now, we've signed a strategic relationship with Longitude, um, and we're going to develop sports betting via single pools. Okay, a lot of you guys have heard about Longitude. They've presented a number of these, these uh, seminars and, and conferences. Um, the interesting point here is we're a large paramutual tote operator, okay? And Longitude came to the market with a product that is all about horse racing, or it started pitching this product as all about horse racing. We've signed a strategic relationship, and it's, it's only about sport. Um, and I think as an industry, we have to say to ourselves, you know, why have we gone down that route? Why haven't we started with horse racing and then moved into sport later? And actually, the answer is because the challenges we would have had to overcome to reach an agreement to actually put this innovation into um, horse racing were too high. Um, we spent long hours with flip charts trying to solve all the issues. And actually, the conclusion was, why don't we just go with football? Because we have to get less people to agree to it, less regulators, less racing organisations, um, less other operators. You know, we don't have to upscale everybody onto ITSP 6 brackets longitude. Um, we can just do it. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it and we're going to go live with single pools and we'll see if it works. Um, Tom obviously doesn't think it's going to fail fast, so this one's obviously a success, but we'll, we'll um, test it out. But it, it fits with our principle of, of, um, of you know, innovation and you know, trying on, on a number of fronts. And I think as an industry, you know, without labouring the point, we do have to ask why that innovation has gone to football when actually it was brought to racing first. Um, second point, BetPro. Okay, this is another innovation. We bought this off of an Australian company, and it's a, if you were to characterise the, the top professionals with their in-house development teams and systems as the sort of tier one, this would be targeting tier two and three punters. Okay, so people have turned over half a million pounds, gives them the ability to sort of compare value in pools with their own either ratings or some tissue prices or some data feeds from elsewhere. Okay, this is pure horse racing. We're not doing it for anything else. Uh, we bought this product. Um, this again suffers from barriers to, um, to innovate because actually there's, a, there's such a concern about the words pro um, a, a around the industry that actually we struggle to actually get this. We are struggling to get contracts with people to connect this in and offer their products via this. Um, so again, it's a barrier to innovation that you know, I, I, I'm not sure I would have if I, was, if I wasn't targeting the racing industry with this. And finally, social betting. Um, we've got a relationship with Badugi. Um, again, these guys have been around presenting. We've gone live with this in the UK. It's a, it's a, it's a young startup in London. Uh, Dave's here. Um, and we, we hope to roll this out in a number of jurisdictions. Okay? And we're looking at it in our North American market. But just to give you an idea of some of the issues that you come across when you try and put this into racing, um, it's close to being a, a pool bet, so you're in danger of creating a B pool. Um, it uh, doesn't have its own sort of ITSP protocols. It concerns regulators because it's got the word social in it, so is it targeting uh, younger audiences 
Um, and you, you know, in, in order to roll this out in North America, we've got to go and convince you know, 37 states that it's legal and it's, um, you know, it's not an issue. So actually the, the legislative barrier to even get this live it really goes against the fail fast mentality. So in the UK, these guys have got it live, they've got it licensed, and they're learning and developing their products. We take it into a, a more regulated market, and just the sheer cost of the regulation and the, and the lobbying and the, um, you know, the government relations is likely to make that a, a challenge um, you know, above and beyond. Um, I said I'd keep it short and sweet. Um, I'm gonna head over to Paul. Uh, I think my message is clear. Thank you.